And everybody see my screen, hopefully. Caller, if you can't, should be seeing a nice picture of mountains that says environmental geoscience, which is indeed this class. If you were not expecting environmental geoscience, well, I guess you are now in environmental geoscience, all right? All right, a little bit about myself. Here I am, your fearless leader, John Van Regen Mortar. You can just call me John or professor or whatever is easiest for you, all right? Um, a little bit about myself. I went to a little place called uh, Grand Valley State University down the road, got my bachelor's there. And then a um, uh, series of master's degrees from Western Michigan University and CU Boulder in geology and biological anthropology and GIS, which is the stuff that runs Google Earth and Google Maps and, and that kind of thing, right? About my history, I do love all the wonders of geology, but fossils are my favorite. Uh, and I've been into hunting fossils from a very young age. Actually, this is a picture of my son when he was one years old, collecting his first dinosaur, a triceratops. Okay, so I cheated, I knew where one was and I put him there and eventually he collected dinosaur bones. Um, and I've uh, been doing this stuff, this geology stuff since I was in high school. As you can see from here, we've all had bad ideas in the past, right? Anyway, moving along. What do I do? Well, technically what I do is high resolution spatio-temporal correlations. You need to know nothing about that. But what I do is I work with fossils and uh, these are different fossil localities, different places where we found fossils. And my job is to do the geology surrounding the fossil locations. So what I do is I run all around up and down these hills and mountains and find these things that are called marker beds, very persistent layers that I can trace all over the place and then we take the um location of these uh these uh fossil localities in relation to those different layers and we can put them in order in time so down here we have aaron's anthills like Park, right scorpio scorpio sandstone that kind of stuff right and this is called sedimentology and stratigraphy which is really what i do so i i organize all the localities so we can look at how things change through time, right? And while I do love all fossils, uh, I am particularly a mammal fossil person. I love uh, studying fossil mammals, including this guy here, who's a, an early primate, right, from uh, Wyoming, the state of Wyoming, not the city of Wyoming. Um, and I love anything with sabers, but I do love all fossils. And I know in the movies, they make it all glorious, but this is what fossil hunting really is, is crawling around in the desert on your hands and knees for hours on end looking for tiny little bones. Okay. I've also done a lot of local research, including stuff in our gypsum mines here in Grand Rapids. We'll talk about that sometime in this, uh, this course, but gypsum was a, a big industry here in early Grand Rapids. And besides just gypsum down in these mines, there's also a lot of fossils, including fish fossils like fish jaws, and then tons and tons of fish poop known as coprolites. So I did a, a paper uh, on those, right? Other things I'm into, archaeology, human and primate evolution, GIS, uh, minerals. I have a big mineral collection. I love collecting them. Uh, and mass extinctions. I love studying how mass extinctions uh, work with evolution uh, over time. Right? All right. So let's get to the nitty gritty of this actual class, right? So this class, right, due to uh, continuing COVID concerns, is going to be delivered asynchronously. That means we do not have to be present at any specific time during normal lectures, right? However, oops, wonder where that went. It was supposed to say we will be getting together to do uh, exams and our final, uh, oh, where did it go? I must have the wrong one up here. Hold on a second. There we go. There we go. We'll start again here. All right. So the normal classes are not uh, in person, right? You'll be doing those on your own. However, we will get together to do the exams. Well, they are digital exams. We will be getting together in the actual classroom to do our digital exams as well as our final project. We will be presenting those in person. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a bit here, right? 
for everything else except exams in the final project, right? Your weekly assignments are due Sunday evenings at 11.59 p.m. So every week, everything is due at 11.59 p.m. on Sundays, right? Uh, I do have virtual office hours, Mondays, 3 to 4 p.m. or by appointment. Most of you should be available for those because that is our registered in-person class time if we meet in person, right? Uh, and the required materials, there is a required material for this. It is a digital textbook. Uh, there's two options. Just the digital textbook um, is uh, purchasable easiest through our Blackboard website. But if you're like me and you can't stand to read things online, you can buy the loose leaf slash digital copy uh, in the uh, bookstore uh, as well. And you'll need access to obviously a laptop um, with download capabilities for this class since it'll be mostly virtual, right? Let's do just a breakdown here. So participation in homework, which includes our Connect Homework chapters, which we'll go through in just a minute. Those are a total of 390 points. Should put an asterisk by this saying that the whole point is, or that whole group is worth 390 points. I'll try to get as close to that as possible. I might go a bit over but the whole, that whole category is worth 390 points. Midterms exams, 140 points each, two of them total, 280 points. Final exam, 180 points. You'll notice that that is not a lot more than just a normal exam. So the final exam is mostly new material with some big concept key questions from the, the previous exams. And then we will have an environmental geology project that is worth a total of 150 points, and there's going to be three little parts to that, which we'll go over in just a moment. Right. What are our goals for this class? Well, one, to expand your knowledge and interest in our planet, our world processes that shape our world. If we look at the news, just recently, we can see a couple good examples of this. The earthquake in Haiti, or just as of yesterday, uh, uh, Hurricane uh, uh, Irma, uh, right, hitting uh, um, Louisiana and pummeling New Orleans again, right? We will also develop an understanding of the scientific process, what science is, what it isn't, uh, and learn to apply that to our life, right? And then here, I think this one's on every syllabus ever, uh, develop critical thinking and analytical skills. So we'll do that as well, right? While most of you may be uh, obviously not geology majors, there may be a couple of you in here are looking at geology as a major. So it's my job to teach the important things, not only to you, but to them to continue on uh, in geology and the geosciences, and also to recruit new geology majors for our program, right? So if you feel like I'm trying to convince you to become a geologist, I probably am, right? Now, this is uh, just a little video, an introduction to our smart books or our Connect, which is our digital textbook, which we'll be using. And this has built in homework for it for each chapter that we will be doing. And that's uh, 10 points per chapter for completing the homework. Right. So I'll click on this and we'll get a little introduction as to what this uh, digital textbook and, and Connect has. This and the checkers game where grandson and granddad will bond. There we go. All right. Welcome to the Smartbook video series. In this first video, the Smartbook overview, we are going to take a look at how Smartbook works and how you would use it. But first, what is Smartbook? Smartbook is a digital version of your textbook. But unlike a traditional ebook, the Smartbook is an adaptive reading and learning experience that actively tailors the content to your individual needs. And what better way to learn about Smartbook than to see it in action? So let's jump into a sample Smartbook chapter and take a closer look. The very first time you launch a Smartbook chapter reading assignment, Smartbook is going to load and then take you to the quick tutorial to show you how it works. Once you complete the tutorial, you will enter a contest to see how your performance compares to other students reading the same Smartbook. There is no contest. I have no idea what they're talking about. Anyway. You can enter an alias or just check the box to remain anonymous. Now you'll find yourself on the first page of that assigned chapter. In this example, we're in a psychology smart book, and I was taken to page one of chapter one. By default, the chapter preview panel on the left will be open so that you can explore the key topics and see how the chapter is organized. When you are ready to start reading, just close the preview panel by clicking this icon here. 
Reading with SmartBook involves three phases, read, practice, and recharge. And each of these critical phases will be covered in more detail in separate videos in this series. The first two phases, read and practice, work together and are how you will progress through and ultimately complete any given chapter reading assignment. As the name implies, the read phase is the heart of the reading experience and where you will begin. What's unique to SmartBook is that by using yellow highlighting, SmartBook is going to call out the most impactful concepts, which will save you valuable time. Once SmartBook recognizes that you have read enough content in the chapter, the practice icon here in the lower left will start to glow. This is SmartBook's recommendation that it is a good time to practice what you have read so far. When you are ready, just click the practice button to move into the practice phase. By asking questions and measuring your confidence in your answers, the practice phase will quiz you along the way to help you master the key concepts. This information helps the adaptive technology in SmartBook create a personalized learning path just for you. Once you so a good thing to point out here is as you work through these questions, uh, you have the ability to work through them uh, until you, you, know, you get all of them correct. So uh, this, I don't know, I think so, unsure, no idea. Make sure you're honest with yourself here because I don't see any of that. That's just how the adaptive software knows how confident you are on that topic. Uh, and if you feel that you're unconfident, not very confident on that topic, it'll bring it back up and, uh, and ask you questions again until you're, you're comfortable with that topic. So make sure you, uh, you um, uh, are, are honest with yourself here, right? Um, and you can continue working on these questions until the due date. And so until Sunday at 11.59 p.m., right? You can still work on these. And as far as you get at 11.59 p.m., that's where it cuts you off. So if you, you're all the way done, great, you're, you're done with the chapter. If you get, say, 80% of the way through, that's the score it will send me at 11.59 p.m. on Sunday evening. Now you can continue to work on these chapters after that, and it will update it on your end. But what you've done by the due date is is what uh, is is your grade for that chapter. Right. Nope. I've answered enough questions in the practice phase. The read button will start to glow, directing you back to the read stage. Continue moving back and forth between the read and practice as you work through and ultimately complete the chapter. It is important to remember that to get full credit for any chapter reading assignment, you need to complete all learning items in the practice phase before the assignment due date. Now, let's take a look at some of the other functionality you have available. Moving to the upper left hand, you'll see these three horizontal lines. If you click on this icon, it's going to open up the left panel of your smart book, revealing some navigation options available. The table of contents reveals two tabs. The assignment tab lists only the required chapters that have been assigned by your instructor in your course. You can also track your chapter assignment progress here. The self-study tab lists all chapters of your smart book, including those chapters that are not assigned in your course, but are made available to you as optional reading. The reports button is where you will find helpful reports that will not only help you track your reading comprehension and assignment completion progress throughout your course, but will also help you study more efficiently. We'll cover this in a separate video as well. And finally, the last phase of SmartBook is Recharge. From your assignments tab, clicking on a completed chapter you have already read will launch Recharge. Recharge looks like practice, but here you'll be periodically asked to recharge or review key topics from previous chapters that you have already completed. <coughs> Push that content into long-term memory. Recharging is a powerful tool to help you get better grades on quizzes and exams in your course. That completes the SmartBook overview video. Be sure to watch the other videos All in this right. series. And thank you for watching. Wonderful. And yes, part of your job is to watch the other videos. Uh, in that series uh, as part of the orientation. Some of you probably already started that. Um, however, now what I would like to do is, is take a few minutes to, to look through our uh, Blackboard page and our weekly assignments, what things are gonna look like weekly, that kind of good stuff. But at this point, does anybody have any questions for me that I can answer? Not getting any questions at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll continue on and take a look at our Blackboard page. Oops, let me get to the right one here. All right, so here is our Blackboard page. Uh, 
like most Blackboard pages, it'll open up first to our announcements. And obviously you found our announcements because you made it to the Zoom meeting, right? And then down this tab on the left here is our important stuff. So stuff for class, assignments, everything you need for the week is listed under the assignments folder. So let's take a look here. So here we have week, uh, the orientation and week one are available to you now. They are both due this Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Take a look at the orientation real quick here, all right? So first thing to do is click on the connect orientation. This will bring you to a page where you can purchase uh, the digital copy of the textbook. Or if you purchased a key code from the uh, bookstore, you can enter that right there as well. Um, and then watch well, the orientation of Blackboard videos, which is kind of what we're doing now. Uh, review the syllabus and schedule. Clicking on there will take you directly to the syllabus and the schedule. And I'll just point out a few things. First off on the schedule. Open, there we go. You'll notice that days that you have to show up in person for those exams are highlighted, right? So first one, you don't have to show up till week five for in person, right? And then exam two, and you'll see uh, environmental geology project and final exam in person as well, right? This list also, this lists also the, uh, the other assignments for that week that you can expect and the learning outcomes uh, that we will be accomplishing during that week as well. So that's our syllabus, our schedule. We'll look at the syllabus since we're here. I'll just open that and get it ready for us. Um, look at that in a minute, but back to our Blackboard for the moment here. Orientation again, and then uh, I'll review the syllabus and schedule. Introduce yourself, and I see that we've had a couple people introduce themselves here already, but uh, this is worth five points, so go ahead and uh, drop a little note in here and uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. Um, this will be how we kind of get to know each other a little bit since uh, since we don't aren't in person in class. And then just a little syllabus and schedule quiz, five points, no big deal, right? That's all due again by this Sunday, as well as chat or week one material. So let's take a look at week one material. We'll be doing the introduction and again, Here's your smart books chapter right off the bat, right? So read through the chapter, complete the uh, the chapter homework, those the, the, the practice phase in there. That'll get you points. When you get up to 10 points, you're good. You're done with the chapter, right? Uh, watch introductory videos or watch weekly videos, right? You notice here we have two videos to watch. Uh, these are required. They're a couple points each, um, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it adds up over the semester. Um, and there are quiz questions embedded in those videos, just to make sure you watch them and pay attention. So read the book, watch the videos, right? Discuss the introductory material. This is an important part of our class as well, because we, uh, we aren't in person again. So um, we have just questions you have about the introductory chapter in general. Then we always have you know, like a kind of opened end question here. How has science been portrayed in our society? Can you think about any examples of how about might be used or misused, that kind of stuff, right? So uh, for the um, discussion sections, right? So each week you'll have, you know, a little discussion that you have to do, 10 points total for the week, um, which is as much as a smart books chapter. And um, there you must post on two separate days of the week. So yes, two postings, but on separate days, right? Because I want you to stay engaged uh, with the uh, discussion that's going on, right? So not two posts at 11 o'clock on Sunday night, right? That won't get you full credit, but two separate days during the week, you must be involved and in posting in the, in the discussion board, right? So what, uh, what counts as a post? Posting a question, posting your own thread if you want, um, if you just don't like any of my questions, posting a response to somebody else's question, an insightful response, not like, you know, I like rocks, that doesn't really do anybody anything, right? But uh, so any of those count towards your, your two that you need each week, right? Um, and then take the introductory quiz, this little five point quiz. I will say to uh, be sure to, to kind of pay attention to these questions. You can take these quizzes as many times as you want till you get all five points, by the way. Um, 
but these questions will reappear in our exams, which we'll be doing in person, right? For the in-person exams, we will be doing those in the class. You'll have an hour and a half to complete those. Um, and you will be allowed to take in your exam review sheet. So let's take a look at the exam reviews. I don't know why these are in here. Okay, there's practice questions and exams. So first exam review, let's take a look here. Uh, you notice this is five pages long, right? Five pages, that's a lot, right? But I promise you there is nothing in the exam that is not explicitly on this uh, five page uh, uh, review, right? So you can fill this out. If you fill this out the night before the exam, you're going to hate me. But if you fill it out as, as we're going along, um, then it's going to be really helpful to you because you can bring in and use this, um, this uh, um, review guide or cheat sheet, basically, if you will, uh, at the exam with you. It'll be the only thing you're allowed to bring, but you can bring that. Right? All right. So make sure you pay attention to that. Visit it often. All right. That kind of good stuff. Oops. So let's go back to our exam reviews. Let's see some other stuff. We got syllabus right there, right? Video office hours. If you're going to come to my virtual office hours or you set up another time with me, you can just click there and, uh, and get to it. Lecture slides are available. Again, exam reviews. Uh, and then our environmental geology project, which is kind of our big final projects, which we will be uh, presenting in class. Um, and there's a rubric posted here and then a couple of, uh, you know, different idea topics, but basically anything that you can think of that's related to environmental geology, hopefully something that kind of piques your interest or uh, uh, works in with, with your own um, um, major, right? Um, we can do all sorts of fun things with those, right? So let me, um, let me break down kind of this environmental geology project a second, then I'll look at a couple examples of it. So here's our environmental geology project. So as a well-informed, socially active resident of planet Earth, you're interested in informing the general public about environmental geology. Your mission, create a project that is to educate the public on a particular topic related to environmental geology, right? This is your chance to shine. You get to pick the media, the format, the design, the topic, and the implementation of this, right? You can do an art project, a video, an interpretive dance, a song, right? PowerPoint, infographics. As long as it is scholarly, this here, so it's out of right? Scholarly and informative, right? Uh, you may work alone or you may group up with one or two other people. Um, you must, however, have your project approved by me, and that is during the three different parts of our project here, the project proposals where I, um, where I will uh, um, uh, approve those, right? Um, so project proposal do uh, 10, 11, so it's a ways out, right? Just a roughly one page proposal, including uh, what topic you have, why you're interested in it, and how you're going to present it. Are you gonna be doing a video, a song? What are you gonna be doing, right? And then we have uh, the second part, and that's worth 15 points, the project update, which isn't due till a month later, uh, is just uh, to keep you on track, remind you, hey, this thing's coming up, right? Um, and then to uh, um, let me know if there's any problems, uh, uh, what's been going on, how far you've accomplished, and that kind of stuff, right? And then in class on Thursday, on that uh, uh, Wednesday, 12 December 8, we will be getting together to present our projects, and we'll be doing this kind of as groups, a bunch of people will kind of set up and, and then the rest of people walk around and check them out and then we'll switch. And then the second half will, you know, the other people will present and then we'll, the yeah, rest of their people will rock around and, and check them out. It works pretty well. Um, but this is a, a generally something folks have a lot of fun with. Um, not sure where my uh, information went, but, uh, so here's a, a, these are just, you know, things that came to me off the top of my head, but here's a bunch of things that you could do it on just to give you ideas. Sea level rise, fracking, earthquakes, mass extinctions, methane hydrates, permafrost, deforestation, coastal hazards, alternative energies, carbon sequestration, oil, oil shales, right? Avalanches, agriculture, geothermal power, all sorts of stuff you can, you can do it. On, right. The thing to remember is that 
Uh, it is for the general public. So you're not going to be too detailed, right? We're not making this for a scientific conference. Think of something that's going to be put at like a, a tourist information station or at a museum or like in a gift shop or something just to sit there and, and for people to look at. Uh, so in that way, it has to be standalone. And what I mean by standalone is you don't have to be there to present it. Somebody can walk up to it and get all the information off of it either by you know, pushing play or fa forwarding on a, a slide or, you know, there's just a poster there or something. So, um, but uh, that is, that is the general idea there. Let me see if I can locate a couple. Oh, here's some project examples. I don't know why it wasn't on the other one. So here's an example of a, uh, a PowerPoint poster that somebody created on deforestation and soy cultivation in the Amazon, right? So this is a good project, you know, see, nicely laid out, right? Beautiful design, it's good information, but not overbearing on the information, right? Nice pictures and stuff associated with it. And then of course, you know, all the, the uh, references and everything, right? So posters are one option. Oh, where'd we go there? Um, if this is here's an example of a uh, powerpoint that somebody made oh this is actually on i put it into a pdf but it's a nice example of uh different types of volcanoes and these are all great projects and i get a huge range of the of projects um but i'll let you know my goal on this is to give you every point i possibly can so you'll see a whole variety of uh, of um, examples on uh, that are, say, A quality examples, right? But uh, the reason is because I'm trying to give you as many points as possible. Um, uh, and uh, but you know, if you do a really crappy job, then I have to go back through and you know grade everything that pisses me off. I won't get a very good grade on that. So let me show you some of the outstanding projects that uh that folks have uh, turned into me here this one is whoops grammarly helps make your writing clear and concise no matter where you are with gram right. so this is one a student who was into uh journalism did on the Enbridge oil pipeline here in Michigan. Energy Partners is a Canadian company that specializes in energy transportation and distribution. In July of 2010, Enbridge was responsible for the largest inland oil spill in United States history. As you can see from some video I think we have from Chopper 7 and from the ground, a huge slick, about 877,000 gallons of oil have spilled out into the creek here near the Kalamazoo River. More than a million gallons of tar sands made its way into the Kalamazoo River system. They've just declared a state of emergency here in Calhoun County. I'm told that there's very toxic chemicals in this oil. Cleanup cost was estimated at $1.2 billion. Ecologically speaking, the river system still has not recovered from this disaster. Five years after the worst inland oil spill in the country, there's another pipeline running through our state, and some say it's another disaster waiting to happen. Two miles west of the Mackinac Bridge resides another of Enbridge's oil transportation systems. Twin pipelines move 23 million gallons of oil a day. As if that fact alone is not frightening enough, the pipeline was built in 1953, making it nearly 65 years old. A potential spill would contaminate 15% of Lake Michigan's open water and 60% of Lake Huron's. It would threaten the drinking water supply of 400,000 customers, dismantle a $30 billion tourism industry, and annual $4 to $7 billion fishery. This freshwater network is an ecological sanctuary to a unique collection of 3,500 plant and animal species and 18% of the world's surface freshwater. Enbridge's data reveals cracks, dents, and corrosion. An onshore portion has lost nearly 26% of its wall thickness, 
patches of bare metal larger than dinner plates are visible in photos of protective coating gaps, much larger than the band-aid sized areas in Enbridge's original reports. Line 5 has already spilled at least 1.13 million gallons in the past 50 years in 30 other areas besides the street. The most well known was in 1999, where 222,600 gallons of oil spilled into Crystal Falls, Michigan. What stops an event like this from occurring in the Straits? The currents under the Straits are three times as powerful as Niagara Falls, flowing in multiple directions, causing the steel pipeline to undulate. Sediments once supporting the pipeline have washed away. Although the company claims to have an emergency spill response plan, it was not approved by the federal government. There is no protocol for a catastrophic freshwater oil spill. And there is no acceptable way to clean up oil from underneath the thick fractured ice that layers the streets for a fifth of the year. One of Enbridge's arguments to keep Line 5 operational is that its employees may lose their jobs, 250 in all statewide. Whereas one in every five Michigan jobs relies on a healthy Great Lakes ecosystem. That's 700,000. Enbridge claims that it is an essential supplier of energy to Michigan. In reality, only 5 to 10 percent of Line 5's product stays in Michigan. Many environmental lawyers believe that Enbridge is illegally operating this pipeline. Water is a public trust owned by the residents of Michigan, not by the government or any one corporation. The current administration is not addressing this issue. It is up to the citizens of Michigan to help change that. Wow, so that was a really amazing project, right? That was way over the top. You don't need to go that far to get an A, but some people have gotten really into it. And if you have, are, are really into stuff like that, I encourage you to, to do that as well. Let's see here. No, that's not it. All right, one more and then I'll let you go here, but... Uh, this is a pretty good one someone did at Grand Valley for a different class, but same idea here, so. I'd like to welcome you to the Great Lakes. Let me get some off my chest. Michigan's the best in the U.S. Hey, y'all better listen up good. Sit up straight, get the pen and paper. Take notes so you can graduate. I'm trying to tell you about these nitrates. Phosphates, how they infiltrate. The lights and lakes and like like Eric. We gotta take it separate. A sleeve, because to me it seems a bit too late. These algo booms have already brought the doom. Tell me that there's nothing that you can do. Then my head will go boom. You gotta think about the future. What it can do to you? What the government sells Think for yourself and say Homie, wake up Leave all the myths and ancient thinkers And the past and the dust I better get the dunes, bruh Step up your conservation And just make an effort to clean up And teach others about the dangers Of melting glaciers And call out strangers Respect the park rangers And don't pollute Gotta be cool to these waters Don't be cold to the H2O If you watch our consumption gotta do it all now i want to hear no salt Of me. Why? Because I got the world's most precious supply of dihydrogen monoxide. 10% to be exact. And as a matter of fact, I'm superior. So if you're thirsty, you can have a drink unless, let's see, you're Nestle. Then you can take your case of candy and jet ski. We don't want you like a brown goby. You're worse than invasive species. So get out of here. Because I'm coming for corporations. 
vibrations like a glacier so you better receive like a big ice sheet or the lower tide yeah looking at you with a ring robot step back or we'll leave you at the mason quit your line yeah extinct cause you stink overwhelm you like a never sing high tide but on the upside we still have hope this michigan adventures are significantly vigilant the leslie no see the big picture and rotting your scope but we're still here and we still care so I don't want to hear no salt. wasn't it? All right. So those are just some examples of things that you can do for your project. I've had people do books like like children's books. I had somebody do like a Native American, this is for a different class, but a Native American lore book. Um, just as long as it has to do with environmental geology and will be informative for the general public. Right? Does anybody have any questions on that or on, on anything we kind of discussed so far or, or today, I guess? This is kind of our I'm pretty much done. So, um, uh, but what kind of questions do you have here, folks? No questions. All right. Well, if you come up with questions, you can always email me, hit me up during office hours, that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so without further ado, I guess we are done then. Right. Um, so folks, uh, uh, remember, uh, both the, uh, um, orientation and week one materials, those are all due, uh, this, uh, this Sunday at 11:59 PM. Okay. Other than that, I think, uh, have a great week folks. Enjoy your first week of school. <laughs>